Good morning, everyone. I am Sandra Okuduha, and welcome to my Pectacture presentation. My topic for today is Throwback Thursday, hashtag TBT. Today, we are going to be going down memory lane as we look at some interesting trends, lifestyles, and technologies in the late 90s and 2000s. A couple of years back, making phone calls wasn't as easy as picking up your phone from the bedside table and calling a friend. You would need to go to a distant payphone owned by Nitel, join a queue to make a call to a friend. This wasn't as cheap and convenient. As time passed on, it got easier to make phone calls. If you were a big boy or big girl back in the days, then you most likely owned a Motorola Flip Razor, a Nokia 3310 or 1100, Sony Ericsson Walkman, most of which had antennas. Kids of these days wouldn't understand what it meant for TV stations to close. That is, having a scrambled screen or a screen showing the colors of the rainbow. Aside from that, you may have also experienced your TV heating up or trying to adjust your antenna severally just to pick up signal. I know I experienced that. When it comes to TV shows, we had absolutely some of the best TV shows, from Fuji House of Commotion to Papa Ajatko. In the foreign scene, we had Paloma and Diego, Second Chance, and many more. These shows had you glued to your TV screen for several hours up until the TV station closes. Hit music, killer beats, dynamic artists will be my description of the music in the 2000s. From Tony Tetsula to Two Face, P Square, Michael Jackson, Chris Brown, and Beyonce. There was never a dull moment in the music scene as fun was definitely guaranteed. Listening to music personally required some manpower because you would literally have to roll the tape of the cassette just to get to the exact song you liked. These cassettes also got damaged easily and so you need to be very careful in handling them just to enable them last longer. Radios were a big thing back then. In fact, most families had a radio but never had TVs. However, these radios were not as possible, portable as they make them these days, and so you hardly see people moving about with them as they were prized possessions for most families. If you think typing with a laptop is work, then you probably didn't experience typing with a typewriter. Talk about some tedious work. I actually learned to use a typewriter in secondary school. However, nothing prepares you for when you make a mistake and you have to start typing a document from scratch. Talk about disappointing. Imagine if we were using a marking touch in our virtual trainings at Brown. The CPU may heat up and the entire computer will go off. Desktop computers were a great introduction after the use of typewriter, but they were not portable and were quite slow. A great upgrade, however. Blackouts and NEPA failures were constant in the 90s and 2000s as well. And so this required that you owned a lantern. I have a very vivid memory of this kerosene lantern in my household. It was a staple in most households as well. This lantern could burn for hours. However, it usually smokes. For those that were privileged enough, they could afford to buy a small tiger gen to keep their lights on. This brand of gen was so popular and common back in those days that I thought it was distributed for free by the Nigerian government. Well. I guess that is quite impossible. Another household staple was the kerosene stove. Cooking food was a long thing, if I may say. However, it was better than the firewood stove. This kerosene stove required you to constantly dismantle it to pull it out of, pull out the ropes and fill it up with kerosene. It also smoked and blackened pots. Do you remember the one liter glass Coke bottle? Well, I do. It was a family favorite, and once every month, my family would share a bottle with our lantern on whilst playing Monopoly. They don't make this in glass anymore, and they also do not make Madza, Crush, Crest, Thumbs Ups, and Citra. Almost every parent's nightmare in the 2000s was Cadbury's Goody Goody. You may ask why. That is because this caramel delight was so addictive, but can give you some bad cavities. This was one of my favorite sweets. I also love the Oxford cabin. They do not make those anymore. 
How can we do a throwback and not talk about fashion? Fashion was a statement from synthetic wigs, which were cheap compared to human hair, to lined lips, boot cut jeans, and abortion belts. There was nothing subtle about our fashion style back in the days. For most moms, their gillies had to be larger than life itself. Your lipstick, your eyeshadow, jewelry, and everything, even down to the shoes, had to be color coordinated. Almost everyone went around wearing platform shoes and dressed to impress. It was almost a competition. Even the kids back in the days dressed to impress. You most likely got clothes that were at least two times your size with the explanation that, and I quote, you grow into it. There was always a special Christmas outfit each year, and that was really something to look forward to. Around the mid 2000s, baggy clothes actually became a trend. Almost every child wanted to dress like their favorite rapper, like Tupac, Biggie, Fat Joe, and many more. Children would dress up just to imitate these rappers and feel swagged out, most especially in secondary schools. It is so amazing to see how times have changed. And looking back, the lesson for me is that we really do evolve. In fact, everything around us does. I hope that through this presentation, you've been able to think back and relive some interesting moments of your life in your head. Thank you very much for listening. I am open to taking your questions and feedback. Thank you very much.